If you've ever thought about buying a second home in Destin, this is the video you absolutely need to watch. Today, we're gonna to take a look at two properties, one that cannot be short-term rented and one that can, and then we're gonna tell you guys kind of the differences and the pros and cons of having a property that you can rent out versus one that you just have as a second home. What is going on? It is Andrew and Kristen with the Original Life on the Emerald Coast team. Make sure you stick around for those houses that we are going to go see. But we do want to talk to you guys right here in the studio for just a minute before we head out there. So uh, let's set the scene. Let's go. So over the last couple of years, Dustin has put some rules and regulations, if you will, in place for short-term rentals, such as the big one that has recently, I don't want to say caused some havoc, but just limited your options is from basically from 98 to where the Dustin Airport is to the northwest of there, um, you can't short-term rent in almost all of that area. There's a couple exceptions, but for the most part, that's just kind of what we call the, the residential area. Um, no short-term rentals are, are allowed. Um, from there, some other rules that they've put in place are that you do have to register your short-term rental with the city. And then the other big one is limiting how many people per home. So you can have two per bedroom plus two per living room. So some things we've seen over the past year or so is basically that people are taking these big, huge homes where they had the big bunk rooms and everything and kind of chopping them up a little bit into making them um, more bedrooms. So you'll see what once was a four bedroom house is now an eight bedroom house. <laughs> and that's in order for them to meet ordinance so that they can still get heads in beds because when somebody comes down here to rent something, yep. a lot of times they want to shove everybody into one household so that they can save money. And it is also beneficial for yep. you guys. Your money makers right there. How yep. many people you can get in. Yep. So some of you might be wondering why you wouldn't want to rent out your home when it's just going to be sitting there in Florida away from you um, being vacant. We actually get a lot of clients that um, purchase their second homes down here just for their family and their friends to use. Um, they kind of don't like the idea of somebody else being in their home using their stuff. Um, and then, of course, you do have more options like we've talked about. So you can purchase those homes that are in the residential area like we like to call that you can't short term rent. So you've got more options that way. There are going to be some pretty substantial differences on whether or not it is a second home that is not being rented versus one that is being rented. One of those big things is going to be the price. That is going to be partially because of the area that it is in, the Destin West or Destin proper that you can't generally do short-term rentals in, is just going to be a little bit less expensive because it's not right on the water or it's not on the island. The little um, you know Holiday Isle is technically a, a an island. So that's going to be a big portion of it, but also because it makes money for for you, it is also going to be more expensive. So it's got that added value there. But the advantage of doing it where you've got your own second home is very similar to what Kristen was just saying. You don't have somebody else in there living in your home, um, you know, messing it up. And then namely, you're able to go to it anytime that you want versus if you've got a short term rental, you're kind of at the ebb and flow of the renters and when they book. So if you wanted to do a last minute vacation, you know, a month out or something like that, it is most likely going to be booked. And then you're generally going to have to fit your vacations in there somewhere unless you block them out ahead of time, which is what most of our people do. So now let's talk about maintenance. Um, it's going to be um, an issue for either either option you go. If you decide to not short-term rent your house, you're going to have to find a way to get eyes on your property. Um, if you're not using it very frequently, if you're only coming down you know, three, four times a year, it's going to be sitting there vacant for a while. So you need to have some eyes on the property. So that's, that's going to be one thing to keep in mind. Whereas if you do short-term rent the property and it's one that's get, being rented quite frequently, you're going to have constant eyes on the property from your guests. Um, you will have a, obviously a little bit more maintenance budget in place because it's going to have more wear and tear. Um, but there is a pretty significant difference there as far as money and eyes on property. It's kind of it's kind of funny how it goes kind of opposite for both directions. Yeah, for a lot of a lot of folks that are buying a second home down here in Destin, they're finding one with a pool or a yard or something like that. So you're going to have a little bit of uh, I guess continuity is that the right word where you've got somebody maybe maintaining the yard, maintaining the pool. So you'll have eyes on it a little bit, but it's not going to be the same as having renters in there and then follow on with cleaners. So you're constantly getting updates. But there is going to be a difference in the budget you need to maintain for a short-term rental versus a standard home. A standard home is going to have all the normal cost of ownership stuff that you're going to have. And so is the short-term rental. The short-term rental is going to have a lot more abuse to the property for lack of a better word. There's people coming in and out. They've got their furniture. They're banging up walls. So you are going to have to have a little bit bigger of a budget in a short-term rental. 
Let's go take a look at two great options for your second home. One is going to be in that residential area and the other one is $1.5 million and it is beautiful. Can't wait, let's get in the truck. Hey guys, we are sitting outside of the first house right now. We are going to run numbers for both of these houses at the end of the video, so make sure you stick around for that. If you guys have a particular property in Destin that you already know about, maybe you're curious about, you'd like some of those numbers ran for you, uh, just comment it down below and we'll comment back with the information. Just give us a day or so to make sure we can gather the information for you. But uh, I guess let's go to the first house. Let's go. So while Kristen is getting everything opened up for us on the first house that we have on today's tour, I wanna give you guys a little bit of idea of where we are at. So directly behind me is where the ocean is going to be. It's probably about a quarter, maybe a half of a mile from where we're at. So we'll throw up a map uh, so you can kind of see exactly where we are. And it looks like she just got it open. So this is the neighborhood here. I'm gonna flip this around to kind of give you an idea of what the neighborhood looks like. This home would be for if you are um, using this as a second home or you're just purchasing a single family residence for yourself, it might not be a second home, but this area is not short term rentable allowed. There's only a very, very small sliver of this section of Destin that is now allowed to do short term rentals. Uh, they stopped doing that. It used to be everywhere and they stopped doing it uh, not too long ago. So things have changed a little bit, but uh, it was kind of a smooth transition. So anyway, let's take a look at the neighborhood and then we'll go in the house. All right, let's go see if she has it opened up and she's gonna give us a grand tour. We'll talk about numbers as I mentioned already. I know I mentioned a couple of times probably, but I wanna make sure you guys are sticking around for those numbers at the end. We'll talk about taxes, insurance, the mortgage, um, what it looks like, cost to own wise, things like that. So let's go look. So we're at 712 Elise Lane in Destin. And first, before we show you the house, we wanna say thank you to ERA, American Realty, for letting us um, use their listing on our video. Um, this property is listed at 629.9, and it's a four bedroom, two bathroom home, 2,100 square feet. Let's take a look inside. Sweet. It's already pretty. I already looked. You cheated. I cheated. All right, so this one is currently staged, um, but it's been completely remodeled. Um, it is a, let me cheat, 1980 is when it was built. So you're gonna see, kind of like we talked about in other videos, um, this one's actually pretty opened up. Um, it's got a split floor plan, um, but you're gonna see a couple of little like 1980s styling as far as like ceiling and brick and things like that. Sweet, let's go look at the kitchen. Let's go. Got a nice eat-in area and you still have a countertop here. All right, eat-in countertop. They've redone everything with the cabinets, appliances. You've got a pot filler. I oh, that's cool. Fillers. I don't cook enough pasta for that to ever matter, but. I don't either, but I still love them. Are they soft clothes? Let's find out. Yes, they are. Here, do that again. Ready? Oh, soft clothes. Soft clothes. <laughs> We've got a backsplash, so it's split floor plan, but first check out this pantry. Oh, geez. And amazing. Oh, this is, look at this. A this is a walk-in pantry. You can hide out in here. Hide and go seek games in this house. <laughs> or on a different level. Yeah. So you've got a, your favorite, a coat closet. Sweet. Then you've got three bedrooms and a bathroom. And there's a little, um, what's it called? Skylight. Skylight, that's the word. They cut the LVP throughout with the black handles and such. So this is kind of what I was talking about with the 1980s coming through the style of the windows. But I kind of love it because you can still put a bed there and you know not cover up the windows entirely. Yeah, get some natural light in here. Yeah. Good sized closets. Mm -hmm. And they've taken down the platform. It looks like they might have redone the windows too. A little bedroom, same kind of style. Except this one can see the front door, so you can see visitors. Did you go next? Yep. Okay. Well, let's go. Let's go. 
wait till we show you that. Okay. So this is the owner's suite. This is such a cool owner's suite, especially for like this part of town, the style of home. Mm -hmm. So you've got your hers and hers closet as Mongo likes to call it. Because let's be honest, it's all hers, okay? But look, they're stand-ins. I would call this one because you've got way more space. That one's got too many windows. Now this is my favorite. You have a slipper tub. I think those are the coolest. It's so huge. And they did a really cool accent on the ceiling. Oh yeah. Like a modern rustic feel over there. Yeah. It's kind of got a little bit of both. They did that in the kitchen too. I like it. Makes it cozy. Outside? Outside. Let's go. So there was a little bonus space before you go to the outside. Look at this fireplace. Mm -hmm. I like that they painted it. Yeah, lights are like placed perfectly. This is awesome. And you've got a shelf for your um, stockings. Because it's Christmas time. That's why we're in jackets. We're not just weird. <laughs> so you have a little bonus space. So at one, this is obviously an add-on, um, but it's a nice use of space, in my opinion. And okay, it's got so a chessboard. Yeah. Something. Oh, no, nope, it's for show. Oh, man. Darn it. I win. I call Damn it. it. <laughs> So if you're using this as a second home, the really cool thing is that there is a garage, so you can still keep your car here. Um, it's keep an extra car, keep a golf cart, whatever you want to do. But people aren't going to know if you're home or not or away because it's back here. So you could even keep a car back here if you wanted to. So there's not one in the driveway. Um, so that's a nice little safety aspect of it. But you still have a ton of space here. It would be really easy to maintain this because you don't have a lot of vegetation. Um, these kind of trees, you don't really have to trim up. Your banana plant thingy over there, I forget what they're called. Elephant ear plant, I don't know what they're called. Those things are pretty easy to maintain. Um, so this would actually make a really great second home. Yeah, I really like, I really like having this on the backside, even though it seems like it's an inconvenience. I think it's like pretty good because if you are using it as a second home, you've got everything tucked away. If you have a project car, maybe you're working on, you know, whenever you go on vacation, which I think would be kind of weird, but like you could do it, you know, that's like your, your thing. Uh, I don't like working on vacation, but some folks do. You could have it back here and you won't have to worry about any of uh, Destin's ordinances or anything like that. Look at this, a little birdhouse. That's pretty cool. I'm pretty confident. Sit down, I'm gonna push you. Oh gosh. Alright. There, hold the expensive camera equipment. Expensive, I mean, not really expensive at all. Well, this looks good enough. Yeah. I'm sure it'll be fine. It's totally fine. That, that branch is definitely stable. You ready? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Yee. <laughs> Yee. This could be you, but you haven't bought a house in Destin yet. Sick burn. Call us. <laughs> All right, let's go to that $1.5 million house. And afterwards, stick around because we're going to talk about the cost to own for both homes. Let's, let's do go. it. A few moments later. Gosh, hurry up. Oh, I can't tell which way is locked. <laughs> Standard real estate agent curse. Can't figure out locks. So we got this little side area too. So for those of you curious about that garage, this would be where you would where you would go. All right, we just pulled up in front of 77 Cayman. So check this out. This is the outside while Kristen is opening it up. We've got the um, the courts, the clubhouse, everything right here, right next to property 
This right here is the clubhouse that is attached to everything. We're gonna go and show you that right after we're done with the uh, tour and everything. We'll sneak it in there before we start talking about the prices on everything and what the cost to own of this property would be. And of course, the last property that we looked at as well. All right, we're at 77 Cayman in Destiny. Um, this house is $1.49 million. It is a four bedroom, three and a half bathroom, 3,400 square feet house. Let's go take a look. Sweet. So one of the things you're gonna notice as far as this being in a community that actually has a lot of short-term rentals are bikes. So they use Southern Vacation rental Rentals, shout out to them. Um, so they have these here for their guests. So it's kind of cool. Southern is one of those uh, really popular uh, short-term rental companies in our area. Um, I would put it between them and Vacasa as kind of like the, uh, I don't know, not premier, but um, most commonly used. Yeah, there's a couple others too, but those are probably the big, the big guys. Um, so we're here. Uh, this house keeps going on and on and on, which is really awesome because if you're coming here as a family, you've got multiple generations, you want grandma and grandpa to have their own space, you want the kids to have their own space, something like this as opposed to the last house is going to fit that bill. So just to kind of get your layout of the home, you've got your main living space and kitchen down here, plus access to the outside. You've got one bedroom over here, and then up here you're going to have the rest of your bedrooms plus an extra cool space at the very top. It's like a bonus space. Bonus space. Bonus, bonus, bonus. <laughs> All right, which way you wanna go? Uh, let's go right. All right, let's go. So, closet. Oh, but wait. So you've got access to your bathroom. Oh, sweet, I like that. A little sink. And you've got a pocket door. I love pocket doors. I'm always gonna point out a pocket door. Just so you know. <laughs> So king size bed, it's a huge room. This would be a great space for your grandma and grandpa coming with you. If they can't do stairs, this is perfect for them. Tall ceilings, we don't feel cramped. It's yep. always a good thing for me. And it's got crown molding. It's got a couple little niceties, if you will, in the other house. It still was really nice, but this one's got a couple little other things. So we've got formal dining room, You've got your living room, you've got little bar stools here at the kitchen. So it's got quartz counters. Um, it's got white cabinets. They're not necessarily new or updated, but it fits the bill. They did something really cute with all the drawer pools and cabinet pools and made it look a little beachy. Um, and then if you come if you swing around here, you can kind of see some of what we were talking about before with like the wear and tear on um the homes oh yeah that's a good i mean it makes it look like it's kind of meant to be like that kind of rustic looking but that is not meant to be there <laughs> <laughs> just judging on the other cabinets that's not meant to be there like a little wine fridge oh yeah i didn't notice it the first time around yeah so through here you've got a laundry room and then a huge pantry and access to the garage Look at this. Holy cow. Okay, so this is something interesting. So I'll see, I see this on probably half of homes. If they don't want your guests to use the garage, more than likely they have an extra car parked in here. They put the lock on the inside, so it's almost like an owner's closet. So whatever's in there, they just want the owners of this house to use, not their guests. So that's a good way to do it. But unfortunately, we can't get in there. <laughs> Want to do the outside now or at the end? Let's go and do that. Okay. Very loud. We can Have that removed. See, wear and tear. That's what we're talking. We just wanted to give you an example of wear and tear. <laughs> so this one does have a little hot tub. It almost looks like a Mickey Mouse head. It's kind of funny. Yeah, a little splash pool hot tub. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I guess it is hot. It's got the jets. Yeah, so in Destiny, there's homes here don't really have a huge outdoor space as far as grass and things like that this is pretty much a good example of what you're going to get or, or similarity of what you're going to get so you know making a lot of use of your patio space for your you know entertainment things like that you'll see that they've got two different tables so 
if you've got kids eating at one or you know parents eating at one or if someone's playing games or whatnot. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't go very far. You can see the uh, clubhouse right from the backyard, yeah. which is kind of cool. All right. Yeah, so this is actually kind of nice if you're using it as a rental because you can tell your guests it's just within walking distance to all the fun things. So a good space here for all the seating and everything. All right, I'll let you go up so you're not looking at <laughs> from this point on now that we've got all these stairs this is going to be one of those things where um you're just probably going to hear us heavy breathing <laughs> just <laughs> <laughs> so uh yeah that's what that is all right so we've got one bedroom here at the front one bedroom at the back and then the bonus space upstairs oh man this is a huge room yeah and they got their own balcony this is cool a huge I'm just more interested in the balcony. doesn't work. <laughs> I really wished it did. Dang it. Oh wait. No idea. For speakers. Maybe it's like a Bluetooth thing. Sometimes they have that. Uh, this doesn't look Bluetoothy. No, it doesn't. It doesn't even turn on. Oh. Oh. But, so this was one thing I thought was really, really cool. They had it up with the stairs. It just didn't work. The little night lights. So you can see where you're going in the dark. Oh uh, yeah. I know, pretty cute. That is pretty cool. Well, well, we got a focus problem. All right, there we go. Yeah, Let's go find Kristen again. Found her. I thought that was pretty cool. This little window to let in some more light into the bathroom. Oh yeah. And then I hadn't opened this up yet, and so I just did to see if maybe it was in the closet. Um, and then got freaked out. Like, that's kind of creepy. <laughs> yeah. Someone lost their doll. The things we see. Yeah. All right, so we've got a cute little book nook. More stairs. Can't wait to breathe heavy again. And then another big old bedroom. Oh, there's under stairs. There's a Harry Potter closet. So this is another thing that you can do if you are using it as a, as a rental as well is um, uh, declare one closet and owner's closet and then put the lock on the outside just like the garage. That way you can keep some clothes here and all that good stuff. Perfect. And there's another balcony. Like, what else do you keep them going? Oh yeah. Huh. It's a big room. Lots of room for activities. You can creep into the clubhouse a little bit. Nobody will even know. But you could also, because you are so close, you could see if anybody's over there and then get in there. If there's, you know, so then you have all to yourself. Let's go climb more stairs. Great. Can't wait for more stairs. I'm completely fit and very healthy, so it's going to hurt tomorrow when it's going to hurt. All right, let's take a break. Let's just take No, we don't have time. No, look at all this space. And there's even more around the corner. So you've got a little kitchenette area, another little eating area, a king-size bed, a futon. Does this come out? No, it does not. But you, someone can sleep here. I bet this is one of those... 
Does it maybe fold back? Yes, it does. Oh, it looks like it does. Yeah. Yeah, it does. This is where I would shove kids because they can have their own space. They have a TV. They can feed themselves. Done. And pushing kids is fun. You know, you can push them on the stairs. <laughs> Jeez, it's got dark. I did that out quite a bit. Another little view outside. Look at the cute little poem. That's cool. So this is the little outside area. You've got your basketball court here, You've got pickleball, tennis, whatever you want to play here. So now in order to get into the clubhouse, you do generally need a key. You need to be staying here. You need to be an owner. So I don't think we're going to be able to get inside, but we are going to try to show you there's a fitness center in here and then we'll sneak over to the pool. We will be able to show you that portion, um, but we're just going to have to sneak in and there's some people in here. So I don't want to creep them out uh, with a camera. So I'm going to try to get at a good angle here. Um, so don't judge me for not getting a perfect shot for us. Oh. So just for reference where we're at here, we just entered the little pool area and that's the house right there, 77 Cayman. So this is how close you are. You've got your little hot tub here, kind of tucked away, tucked away in the back. Little shower. And look at this pool. Now we've got a bunch of loungers, of course, you know, because you're gonna you're gonna want to lounge around, cool off a little bit after dipping in that pool. And then we've got the fitness center right here. Again, there's folks in there, so I don't want to. You know, be shoving a camera in their face, uh, but it is a fairly decent uh, little fitness center. I'm gonna see if we can actually get a photo of it um, because, again, don't want to bug them. So let's go ahead and look at the rest of this. Hey, it's Kristen. And then as usual, we do have bathrooms right behind us. So you don't have to run to your rental or run to your property uh, to get that, uh, get that little tinkle in. So we've also got little clubhouse area upstairs. So if you wanted to host some friends over, you want to host a little get together, you've got that plus access to the pool. You've got a nice balcony up there with some seating as well as an inside uh, little area. So this is Destiny um here in Destin. Destiny and Destin. Destiny and Destin. <laughs> Keep in mind that they do have rules here as this one says right here bathing load of eight people so if you are going to take a bath in here just make sure you limit it to eight people please. Okay now that you've seen the house well both houses now we've seen the clubhouse we've seen the pool the tennis courts, the neighborhood. Let's talk about numbers so that you guys understand exactly kind of the differences between owning a second home just to own one and visit it at your own uh, versus renting one out and making a little bit of money in the, you know, in the process. Yeah. All right. So property taxes. This is going to be one of the big differences. For the 712 Elise Lane, those property taxes were right about 4200 for the year. Cayman, this, the house we're still in, um, fourteen thousand two hundred dollars. Yeah. So it's a lot of location and value. Um, home insurance. So home insurance is going to be a little bit different. Um, obviously, if you're going to use it strictly as a second home and you don't need that extra liability for any tenants or guests that are in there. Um, for seven one two at least, you're looking at around three thousand dollars. That might be on the conservative side. 
Um, so it might be a little bit higher than that, but a rough estimate. Um, 77 Cayman, on the other hand, because it is, you're gonna need that extra liability insurance and all the other good stuff. You're looking at almost double that, so close to $6,000. All right, so HOA dues. Destiny is an is an HOA um, community. This is 77 Cayman. Um, Elise Lane was not in an HOA, so there's no extra fees for that. But for Cayman, um, your des your Destiny HOA dues, if I can spit it out, um, <laughs> you're looking at four thousand forty three dollars for the year. But there's also an added um, lawn maintenance fee, so they take care of all that stuff for you. Um, so they're at five forty per quarter. So overall for the year, you're looking at sixty two hundred dollars. Um, so then that brings us to lawn care because on the other home that was not included because there was no HOA. So you're looking around like 250 to 300 for the month in the in the spring and summer, early fall season while the grass is still growing and not dormant. So that's actually not that bad of a deal when you're really looking at it from an apples to apples perspective. You're going to be paying $300 a month at the other property and you're paying essentially 5000 a little over five or 500 a month here. And you're also getting all of the stuff that we just showed you. You're getting the, the you know, everything taken care of. You're in an HOA community. And of course, we're like 100 yards from the beach. Yep. So pool company is next. So with the Elise home, there is no pool. So at the current moment, you wouldn't have that expense. If you were to go put a pool in, you're looking at 150 or so for the month for maintenance to for someone to come by and make sure the chlorine is good and all that good stuff. In Cayman, um, there is no pool. There's a little hot tub here, which you might not really need to do anything for it too much. Um, and your pool across the street is included in your HOA. So there's no added expense beyond your HOA dues. Okay, next up is going to be your mortgage. Your mortgage is obviously going to be the biggest expense that we're going to be discussing today. And there's a big price disparity between these two for a lot of different reasons. So obviously they're not going to be comparable. But in the first house, it was $629. That's the current asking price. You're looking at a mortgage of approximately $4,100. It's about $4,076 per month. Uh, based on current interest rates, again, all of these numbers are going to be based on right now, which is December of 23. Interest rates are sitting at a, what'd you calculate this six, one at? Five. Yeah, six and a half. They are dropping. So I'm expecting that to get considerably cheaper. Now the house that we're in now, 77 Cayman, which is 1.49 million. So obviously this is gonna be more expensive. The mortgage on this one is about 99.50 per month, uh, plus or minus a few bucks based on those same metrics. Now, obviously this one would be bringing in some income. So, you know, it might end up being a wash. You might even make money on this one. We'll look at those here in just a second. Yep. Okay, so repair budget. We talked about this earlier, how the difference in your repair budget is gonna be obviously with the home on a lease where you weren't going to be renting that out. It's just the wear and tear of you and your family. Um, so we budgeted about a thousand for the year because obviously, you know, things happen. Um, water heater might break or whatever. Um, Obviously, a water heater would be more than a well, thousand. Yeah, I know yeah. somebody's seeking that right now. <laughs> this is just for like basic stuff yeah. a toilet you've got to replace once yeah. in a while, you know, some drywall, just very basic stuff. Mm -hmm. Of course, the larger expenses are going to happen on both properties. Right. We can't really plan for what an estimate on that's going to be because it's all going to be dependent on all of the features of the home. Right. And in 77 Cayman, we estimated about 3,000 because it is a much larger home. And again, with all the wear and tear. And then with it being a, you know, a rental, uh, a rental home, if that's what you are doing with it, you've got some additional expenses to think about that we kind of wrapped up into that 3000 mm -hmm. numbers, but mainly replacement costs. So despite this being a $1.5 million home, people are going to take your, you know, forks, your spoons, your- Or accidentally throw them away. Yeah, throw them, throwing yeah. them away is really big, especially <laughs> with the utensils. Yes. And then you'll actually see this, I'm not kidding, if you guys have ever gone to the Destin beaches and you see somebody out there with pots and pans, it's from their rental most of the time. So yes, they will take it and make sand castles with that amazing pot you have. So uh, just make sure that you uh, you kind of factor that in because replacement costs are a thing. You're gonna have to buy those about once a year. Yep. All right, so now your total expenses, the number we've all been waiting for. All right, so on the home that you're not going to rent out, the Elise home. So the first house we the saw. first house, yeah. yes. Yeah, so we, this number is including your mortgage, including your property taxes, all the good stuff. Um, you're at about $53,000 for the year, for the year. On the big home that you're gonna rent out on the side, you're at about 129,000, 129,000. That's a better way of putting so it. considerably different. Now, yes. when we're talking about loans, we are using a standard 20% down conventional off current interest rates, as we mentioned before. But when it comes to purchasing a rental like this, there are a ridiculous, actually, there's a lot of options on both sides. Mm -hmm. 
But with this in particular, I like to mention that there are certain particular loans out there that can help you purchase things like this right. that don't necessarily need your income. This doesn't mean that if you're not making any income that you could purchase a $1.5 million home necessarily, but a lot of times you can get what's called like a DSCR loan is just one example out of many that I want to touch on um, where they're going to use the rental income from the property as your qualification because they know that you're going to be throwing this back on the rental market. Um, that's part of the agreement with the DSCR loan mm -hmm. so that they've got their collateral in that you're making enough money to pay the loan back. And of course, there are other options, whether you're doing a first or, you know, a second vacation home, there's some options there. You've got just, there's just a bunch of different options. You've got low down payment. We've got, you know, just tons of options. And we do have preferred lenders uh, that we can help push you through that we work with all the time that are already skilled at doing this. So you're not rolling the dice with somebody hoping that they know yes. what they're doing. <laughs> Which is very important. <laughs> yes. Especially here in Florida, we have a lot of rules down here that a lot of lenders are not able to get around. Um, I'm not going to go into all of them, but trust us, yes. a, you know, a local lender that somebody that, that your realtor suggests is very, very, mm -hmm. Um, I guess, highly suggested. Very important. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So the home that you're not going to rent, we're looking at 52, 53,000 for the year. The home that you are going to rent on the side, we're looking at about 130 for the year, but you're going to be making income Ooh. hopefully. So for the, for, for example purposes, 77 Cayman had some rental projections by some of those. One of them was actually Vacasa. Oh, um, cool. So a couple of the, the bigger names in our area, they project for the year and this is gross. So it kind of does, well, it's, it's gross. Um, I'll leave it at that. So their projections were between 125 and 145. So potentially you could actually make money. Not a ton, obviously, but there's some, there's some income to be had. Yeah. So if you're doing the very basic loan, there is a chance that it's going to wipe itself clean, but there is that hidden cost of somebody actually managing it for you. Mm -hmm. And this isn't a long-term rental. So they charge a lot more in our area or actually across the country for the most part, rentals are somewhere between eight and 12% for long-term. Um, of course, you know, it could be different in your area, but that's like the most common that I see. Whereas here in our area for short-term renting, you're looking at generally 25 to 35%, um, depending on a, a several different factors. You know, the higher that you pay, the more done for you it is, the more money they're g generally spending or the better track record they generally have. But you can expect about 25% of that to go to a property manager. And you're going to want that because your phone will blow up when you have uh, when you do everything right with an Airbnb yep. or short-term rental. So I'm promising you the the management company. Every client I've had at least uh, that purchased one, they're like, "We're going to do it on our own." Six months later, I'm checking in on them, and they're like, "Yeah, no, that was not a good idea." Because people will call you. This is the most common complaint I get. They'll call you when it's already rented, Airbnb, VRBO, and they'll be like, I'm just checking to make sure that it's rented. Like, yeah, it's, it's rented. So you're getting 10, 15 calls yeah. even when it's not rented. Yeah. So unless it's your full-time job, which I have a client that that's what she does. She rents them all herself. She manages them oh, that's herself. Good. But she's doing it from Georgia on, and that's her job. So um, so it's it's doable, but yeah. I don't want those phone calls. <laughs> Me either. I'd much rather pay somebody else, yes. take take my winnings, yep. take my earnings. Yeah. and uh, Send me the bill. <laughs> yeah. And there's a lot of tax benefits too. So, yeah. you know, when we're looking at both of these two, you've got the, the second home doesn't provide a ton of tax benefits. You got the basic ones for home ownership and, mm -hmm. you know, all of that's great. Um, but with, with something like this, there's a, there's a lot of different tax benefits, whether it's um, just the things that you're putting into the property, they generally come furnished. So that's another expense you don't have to worry about. But um, with the tax benefit, you can actually go to the property every single year, fix something while you are here and essentially talk to your CPA. Right. Super clear on this. I'm not giving any tax advice. But from my experience, what most people notice is that they can write off that vacation. So if you're spending $20,000 every single year coming to Destin anyway, you, the general consensus is purchase something. And it doesn't have to be anything that's elaborate. Right. Keep in mind, you can purchase condos all yep. the way from $250,000, $300,000, although those are starting to get pretty rare right now, yes. um, all the way up to unbelievable numbers, 20, 30 million, yep. stuff like that. And those tax benefits are not figured into these equations. So um, keep that in mind too. And the last thing that we have for you, the very last thing, 
is if you need any help with any of this, remember we are real estate agents first. We'll throw all of our contact information up on the screen. You can call, text, throw a carrier pigeon at us or a football with a note on it. You can DM us on social, however you like to get a hold of us. We'll work with you that way and we can help you find either your next second home, your primary home, or you know, your next moneymaker. There you go. See you guys next week.